Welcome to this tutorial on how to export video from Adobe Premiere Pro in high quality settings. Now let's get straight into it. This video is going to be divided into four parts. First, I will go through and show the settings I use when exporting video at 1080p. I will then do the same and show you how I export video at 4K. I will then give you some advice on how you can reduce the file sizes of your exports while still retaining very high quality. And then finally, if you're interested, I'll actually explain some of the parameters and settings that I am using for this process. But I realize a lot of people are not interested in that kind of deep dive. So I'm leaving that kind of explanatory material to the end of the video. So before you even begin to export, you will first want to actually work out what your source video was shot in, in terms of its resolution and its frame rate. Um, this is so we can export it at the same settings and it will look as good in the export as it did when you shot it. So the way you work out this type of information is go click on one of your initial source files, something, you know, the raw file that you shot in a camera, right click on it and then go to properties. It'll give you all this information and the two lines that we're particularly interested in are these two, image size and frame rate. Image size refers to the resolution that you shot your video in. In this particular case for this clip, it's 1920 by 1080. That means that basically we shot it in 1080p. And then also the frame rate. Uh, in this particular case, my frame rate is 25 frames per second. Yours will probably be 24 or 25 or 30 or potentially higher. Just make sure you're aware of that because we want to export it at exactly the same frame rate, which is frames per second. Another thing that you should probably check before you export is that that's the, that's the information of the source video. Let's just make sure that our sequence is also in the same type of resolution and frame rate parameters. You do that by going up the top, click on sequence, go to sequence settings, and again, we have frame size 1920 by 1080, as in it's 1080p. And then we have the time base, which is 25 frames per second. If you're finding that your sequence settings are different to your, the information you found in your source clip, you can click and change this. Once you are happy that your sequence is in the correct format of your raw clip, to export, go to File, Export, Media. And then you'll be given this screen. I will explain what all these uh, settings do later in the video if you're interested. But right now, I'll just go through and show you what I personally do to achieve the highest quality settings for a 1080p export. So what I do is I use the format H.264. I then go to the preset match source high bit rate. I then go to output name and select a uh, location and give it a name. I ensure that I am exporting in video and audio. If you don't want audio, you can unclick that, but I want to leave it on. And then I have a look at the video parameters and settings down here. Now, because my preset was set to high bit match source high bit rate, it's automatically selected the width and height, the resolution, to ensure it is the same settings as the sequence. The frame rate is automatically going to be set to 25. Keep field order at progressive. Keep aspect at square pixels 1.0. Then click render at maximum depth. Under encoding settings, if you can, use hardware encoding. If it, this depends on your computer, sometimes software encoding might be the only option. But if you can, click hardware encoding. I then change profile to high and I change the level to 4.2. So that's what I have there under encoding. You can ignore all of this and keep scrolling down. And then we get to bitrate settings, which is probably the most important aspect of this entire exporting process. For bitrate encoding, I select CBR, and then for target bitrate for a 1080p export, I use the figure of 30. That's all that you need to worry about under the video tab. Under audio, just make the audio tab, 
just make sure that the audio format is double AC and you're using 48,000 Hertz stereo if you want. And then the bitrate here should be 320. Finally, I also click on use maximum render quality down below, and then we are ready to export. Now, this will give you quite a large file size. I'll explain later in the video some potential ways to reduce that file size if you want. But remember, we're exporting at high quality settings. It's gonna be a big file. Your final uh, choice here now is to either click Q or export. If you click Q, then the uh, video exporting is going to be pushed out to another Adobe program called Media Encoder. If you click export, the uh, encoding and exporting will be done inside Premiere Pro itself. Personally, I often click Q because I find that the uh, other program is a bit smoother and sometimes actually a bit faster, uh, but it's up to you which you want to do. So now I'll go through my settings on how I personally export 4K video at high quality settings. I now have a different sequence set up with a different clip. This clip here is in 4K. First off, we need to follow the exact same process as we did previously with 1080p. So what I will first do is I will look at one of my source files just to find out what the resolution and the frame rate is. So if I right click, go to properties, Again, we're interested in these two lines here. We have an image size of 3840 by 2160, that's native 4K resolution, and a frame rate of 25. Now, I just wanna make sure that my sequence is also these exact same parameters. So I will click on sequence, go to sequence settings, Time base is 25 frames per second. Frame size, again, it's exactly what it was in the source clip, so that's good. It means we're going to export at the same resolution and frame rate that we filmed in. Remember, if you need to change this, you can do it in the sequence settings. Just click on it and pick the frame rate that you actually shot your video in. All right, so this is all ready to go. To export, I go File, Export Media, and then these are the settings that I use to export 4K. Again, if you wanna know why, I'll explain later in the video. So I use format H.264. I then go preset, match source, high bit rate. I then give it an output name and select my location to export to. So for this one, I will call it 4K example one and click save. Obviously you wanna tick export video. If you want audio as well, make sure that's ticked. If you don't want audio, leave it unticked. Okay, under the video tab here, we need to go through and just look at some of these settings. So under basic video settings, because we have already matched the source under here, under the preset, match source high bit rate, our width and height, the resolution will be at 4K settings. It will be at the settings of our sequence. So that's great. The frame rate is at 25 because it's matching what our sequence is, great. Leave field order at progressive. Aspect, leave at square pixels 1.0. Click render at maximum depth. Under encoding settings, use hardware encoding if you can. Under profile, tick high. Under level, change this to 5.2. You can ignore everything else. And then we get to bitrate settings. I use CBR and then the target bitrate. Well, this is up to you. For 4K, I would recommend a minimum of 60 here and a maximum of 100. Both of these are gonna create really big file sizes. Uh, 100 is gonna create the biggest file size. Um, now. How do you decide between 60 and 100? Well, one way you can do it is actually see how many megabytes your source clip was actually shot in. The way you do this on a Mac is go and find your initial source raw clip that you shot in camera, not in Premiere Pro, but actually find it in Finder. Open it in QuickTime and then if you, while playing it, if you press 
Command I, you'll get some more information here about the clip. And what we're interested in here is the data rate. You can see here my data rate for this particular clip is 100 megabits per second. So that means I shot at 100 megabits per second. So if I want to export at the highest quality settings, I'll now close QuickTime. I need to export at 100 megabits per second. Um, maybe your 4K vision was shot at 60 or 75 or something different. So that's how you kind of work out what the target bit rate should be for highest possible settings. Next, make sure you click use maximum render quality. And then for audio, if you're using it, make sure that the audio format is AAC, 48,000 stereo, and bit rate is 320. Then you can either click Q or export. Q will send it to Adobe Media Encoder. Export will uh, encode inside Premiere Pro itself. As I said previously, I usually use Q. I find that Adobe Media Encoder generally tends to export a bit smoother. All right, so if you're following my personal export settings advice, you have probably found that your videos are a ridiculously large file size. That's because we're exporting at really high quality settings, potentially too high for uses such as uploading to YouTube or social media. So how can you still retain a very high quality settings while keeping the file size down? Well, here's some potential advice. I'm gonna go back to our 1080p example here, and I am going to, again, go File, Export, Media, and I will keep all the settings the same as I did before. Make sure that match source high bit rate. I will click Render at Maximum Depth. I will change this to high, change the level to 4.2 because this is 1080p. And then under bitrate settings, this is where I'm going to make an adjustment. So before I recommended clicking CBR 30, and we can see the estimated file size of this particular clip will be 105 megabytes. If that's too large, then you can actually go bitrate encoding VBR to pass, and then keep the maximum bitrate at 30, but you can change the target bitrate to half. So in this case, it would be 15. So I would have target bitrate at 15, maximum bitrate at 30, and I would still click use maximum render quality. Now have a look at the estimated file size. It's actually gone down by about 50%. Now, I will explain later what the difference between CBR and VBR is. Um, but to my eye, I can't see any discernible difference when I export using VBR to pass using these settings. However, please be aware that while the file size will be smaller, it's gonna take a lot longer to render. Now, if you're interested in a way to reduce the file size for a 4K export, what I do there, and I'll go to the 4K example over here. So file, export, media. Uh, again, H.264, match source high bit rate. Click render at maximum depth. Profile becomes high. Level for 4K is 5.2. And then under bit rate settings, I go to VBR to pass. Now, again, we want our maximum bit rate to be whatever we would have used for CBR. So in this case, it would be 100. And I'm going to do the target bit rate at half that, 50. This should again reduce the uh, file size by about 50%. But again, the length that it will take to render an export in Premiere Pro will be substantially longer. Okay, now on to the most boring part of this video, me attempting to explain why I use all these particular numbers and parameters. This is probably going to be thoroughly unsatisfying to uh, people who with actual technical knowledge about this type of stuff, but I'm not a computer engineer 
And honestly, uh, I can't probably give very satisfying explanations to a lot of this, um, but I'll attempt to explain as best as I can. All right, so I'm gonna use the uh, 4K exa exporting example as we go through uh, the parameters. So again, I'm gonna go up to File, Export, Media. So for format, I use H.264, and the reason for that is because it's the most commonly used video codec. It's also the one that works the best with social media and YouTube. I use preset match source high bitrate because it's a really easy way to get your exporting resolution and frame rate to match what you have in the sequence. If we go down to video, I will go through some of these parameters. The width and the height refers to the resolution of the video. Again, because I've match source high bitrate, um, these are pre-filled correctly. The same with the frame rate, because I've match source high bitrate, the frame rate is going to be whatever it is in my sequence. Field order and aspect, I don't actually understand. I leave them pre-filled. I'm going to ignore ticking render at maximum depth in terms of an explanation for the moment. I'll come back to it. In terms of encoding settings, why do I do profile high and level 5.2 for 4K? Um, it's what I've been told by professional editors. So I don't actually understand what it does. You're really gonna to have to do a deep dive in terms of um, uh, video codecs and encoding parameters to actually work out why this is. But yeah, it's just the advice I've been given from professional video editors. All right, moving down to bitrate settings, the difference between CBR and VBR. This is actually something that I almost understand and can almost explain. CBR stands for constant bitrate, VBR stands for variable bitrate. If you use constant bitrate, like I normally do, and again, I'm gonna use my target at 100. Um, what's going on is that every single second of this video is going to be encoded at the same bit depth, no matter how complicated the visuals are of that particular second, right? It's always going to be encoded at the exact same file size. It's constant. The amount of quality for each second is determined by this slider. The lower the number, the less uh, output quality per second. The higher the number, the higher the output quality per second. That all sounds great, but it does create really big file sizes. So if you go to variable bitrate, what's going on here is that you're letting Adobe Premiere Pro decide, well, how complicated is each second of the video and how much quality should be devoted for that particular second. So a good example is if you were exporting a photo, right? A photo doesn't change in terms of every second. It's actually the same image for each second that that photo appears in a video. So you probably don't need to export that at 100 for every single second, right? It can probably be at 100 for the first second and then for each additional second that that photo appears, it can probably be exported at a lower quality. And that's what variable bitrate is doing, right? It is changing the bitrate per second depending on how complicated the video is per second. So my understanding is if, the, you, if you halve, if you have a maximum bitrate of whatever that is, and then you halve that for the target bitrate, what Adobe will do is it will use 50 Mbps when the image is not particularly complex, but if the image becomes really complex, it will ramp it up to 100 and it will vary between those numbers. As I said before, what variable bitrate does is it reduces the file size, but because Adobe Premiere Pro is now not acting at a constant, it's varying the amount of uh, export quality it does for every single second, the exporting time takes way longer in the program. Okay, the final piece to the puzzle, why do I have use maximum render quality ticked and also um, render at maximum depth ticked? I'm not even going to attempt to explain this. I'm just gonna include a link in the description to a blog post that explains why both of these things should be ticked. Basically, it has to do with 
if your video includes any kind of position movement or scaling movement. If you have those two checkbox ticked, then the likely result is a higher quality image at the end. And because I'm all about the quality of the end product, um, I keep them ticked. It probably takes the exporting a tad longer, but it's worth it in the end according to this blog post. All right, so I hope that explanation, I know it's entirely unsatisfying. It probably shows that um, I am not a computer engineer because I'm not. Um, and I really just care about how to achieve the best quality results. I don't really care on what's going on behind the scenes. So yeah, that's my current exporting workflow. Uh, it's changed a bit in the last couple of years and I seem to get really, really good exporting results using it. So I hope that assists the people out there and um, good luck in making your video content.